Oh, updates. Don't you love them? Of course you do. That's why you're watching the video. And boy, do I got some updates for you with the Mustang. Oh my God, I think we're finally on like the tail end of just this crazy process that it's been to get this fixed. I don't think it's 100% done. I'll go over that in a second. But it's sure enough close to finish as it ever was. And that just makes me happy. I had to shave my beard because of all the additional gray hairs from this whole thing. But with all that said, let me go ahead and explain the good, the bad, and we do have a couple things to do here with the Mustang. So um, let's get going. Let's have some fun on Cars Create. Okay, first thing is first. Uh, as far as everything goes with the car, you've seen the last video updates of the problems the car had coming back from the body shop. The good thing is those were fixed and then more were created and more were found. So what I mean by that? Okay, so the good thing is they were able to sand out, I guess it, it was just clear coat that was here that run in the paint. They were able to just sand that out and uh, that's fine now. I was able to remove all the adhesive. There's still a little bit left over, not so much there, but on the other side because they left the whole strip over here. I had to remove it. So there's like some left here and some marks I have to get out, but like most of it's good. You know what I'm saying? Like I got a little scratch there, gotta get out, but like we're, we're golden there. And there was a little strip here I had to remove, so that's all good. The hood and fenders fit a little bit better, but not great. I'm gonna have to make a few adjustments. It seems like up here, I don't know if it needs to be shimmed or what, but it's still sitting a little low right here. And right here, you can see the gap is uneven here. I mean, the fender seems fine. It's the hood that has to be fixed and I don't know which way it goes. This line gap here is a lot more uniform. Actually, look, it looks skinnier here, wider up here, whereas on the other side, wider down here, skinnier up there. So I'm gonna have to figure that out on my own time. And uh, there was a scratch up here on the hood that they wet sand it and by doing so, they created, it's kind of hard to tell because there's pollen on the car now, but they created, it's like right here, a nice big, just part of the paint where it swirled. So that all has to be, that has to be cut down with some polish and the whole hood has to be just polished. The whole car has to be polished. There are a lot of scratches that's all over the car from when they washed it. And I'm grateful that they washed it because I didn't have to, but they just went with rags and just went all over the car and i'm like come on guys you, you do paint work don't you know not to use a dry rag on a car in the sun and that's what they were doing so yeah everything is all scratched up so but it, they're they're minor scratches they're light scratches so those are easy to get out take a look at some of the other problems under here that were remedied both by the shop to some extent and myself all right first things first a lot cleaner down here. They wiped some of this down for me, thankfully, but I kind of went in with the fine tooth comb and started wiping down more stuff and make it look presentable. Still needs a lot more work, but it's a lot better than it was. Boot prints still <laughs> there. Um, yeah, I was not happy about that. I made sure I told them that and uh, they, oh, well, you know, we're sorry. Yeah, we're, you know, I'm like, uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yep. For the most part, like everything under here that was wrong was fixed. Remember how I said there was a missing piece here? It's this piece right here. Well, that is part of today's video is the piece just came in at the shop. I'm gonna go pick it up along with that piece that was hanging down under here, which has since been removed. So they should also have that there today too. We can put that on ourselves. And you're asking yourself, why am I doing it myself? There, it's their problem. They were supposed to fix it. Ah. <laughs> That's where things get interesting. I was as patient as possible as I possibly could have been with letting them fix their mistakes. Remember how I said that the trunk lid was removed and the taillights are removed? Well, I noticed back here that, see it's fresh because of how it's chipped. There's that. I think it's also on the other side too. Yep. 
right right there you can see some scratches right there where they just weren't careful right there's a chip too that's infuriating when i saw that that ticked me off and then sure enough it wasn't but a moment later did i come down here and notice this because of all the pollen on the car right now it's kind of hard to tell but see that scuff right there it ain't big it ain't like deep in the paint that can come out with some polish but it wasn't so much that like it can be easily fixed it was the fact that it was even there and if that wasn't enough you come over here and then you see a gouge in the paint all together where the paint's missing um on the corner here of the bumper so when i saw that i just lost it and this was after i had taken the car back to have all the other things fixed then i noticed that so i'm like Every time I get the car worked on by them, something else either isn't right or I keep finding more wrong. So I was just so ticked off. I'm like, no more. You guys are not working on my car, no more. Thankfully, I was able to speak to the owner. He didn't fight me all that much. I think he really saw how much was screwed up and we came to an agreement to all of this. And that is, first of all, um, I'm taking care of everything else wrong with this car and installing those two other parts that they're ordering for me. That's that's the one agreement. Uh, secondly, they don't have to worry about paying their guys to fix the other things wrong. I'll take care of it on my own time, that there is definitely some financial compensation or at least a refund coming back to me, which I think is, at this point, was the only appropriate way to deal with the situation. I get it, the car's fixed. The paint matches beautifully, but I mean, you know, come on now. Body work, you know, especially collision repair is serious work. It takes serious skill. It takes serious people to do it. They're basically rebuilding cars, man. And it, it takes patience. It takes a lot of attention to detail and finesse. And I don't think any of that happened during my repair. So, but what am I? I'm not a professional. <laughs> I'm just got to mix YouTube videos. So that's out of the way. So while we're waiting to go pick up those parts, I do have something to take care of under the hood here. Now see, this was something I was going to make a whole video on, but that didn't happen and it was supposed to happen <laughs> well, a long time ago, but I decided to put the car into a tree. And that is uh, replacing this right here, which is <laughs> this right here. Anyone knows what this is knows that these are a problem. And yes, this has become a problem. At least it was a problem. Every time you would fill up gas, especially you top it off a full tank, it would run weird. It would run very uh, rough. I would also just very often get a huge whiff of just fuel. Just smells like raw fuel. I guess there's always a possibility that that problem is something else, but I still think it is related to uh, the uh, fuel vapor valve here. So I, uh, you know, ordered this a long time ago. Genuine forward part. And we're gonna go ahead and slap this on real quick. And I'm hoping replacing this remedies a few of the problems I was having. Yeah, normally this clip is not supposed to come out like this, but it's in two pieces. So that should come up there like that. And then back here, go, let's get on there like that. Yeah, that should do it. Super simple to replace. Technically this would be covered under warranty, but the part wasn't all that much. like clip and throw that on there like that locks in place safety clip yeah this is super simple this is why i decided to do this on my own because even though like i said it would have been covered under warranty first of all you have to prove that it's wrong a lot of times that doesn't always it's always easy to do at the dealership because they don't want to have to do anything the price of the part which is like 50 50 bucks or something like that was well worth the hassle i would have to endure with the dealerships Look at that, all done. I wasn't going to go through all that trouble for something as simple as that. And most importantly, there was one final piece of the puzzle that just was not right. And that was taken care of in last video. I'm sure you've seen it, if not, wow, you gotta go see it, it was pretty cool. So, you know, click the link up here and uh, go watch it after this video. It was basically getting the Boost Max figured out. So at first we thought, 
it was the module itself, which is it's right there. It comes out to be that it was not the, the module because what happened was I, I drove over there and they gave me a new module. So we plugged it in, made no difference. So at that point, we knew it was something with the harness. As you can see, they gave me a whole new kit, which I reinstalled with the fresh harness and everything. And it's an updated module. They made a few revisions to the these modules since the one I had. And yeah, it makes a huge difference. It runs a lot better than it did. So I'm pretty impressed with whatever changes they made. It works so, so much better. It doesn't so much feel like the car is tuned. It just feels like the car just has a lot more power from the factory. Like it's just, it's a good system the way it incorporates with the factory ECU tuning. And I honestly could not be happier. So since this is all buttoned up now and we've replaced the fuel vapor valve and everything, I'm gonna go take a ride and uh, pick up those parts from the body shop. And I'll show you how good the car is running. So we're gonna get on the road and have a little fun. First things first, cold start. I'm telling you, it's louder on the cold starts with the copper plugs than it is the factory iridium plugs. I had mentioned that once before, and uh, I, I don't know. I guess without doing back-to-back -back comparisons, really no way of telling, but it seems a little louder. But you can see the car is just running beautifully. It's idling just fine. Everything is good. I think we're good for a, a pull or two, at least a small one for the moment. So here's like some second gear. Oh Jesus. I couldn't keep the camera straight because the whole, it, I was pushed back. Fourth now. Just gonna stab it. There's definitely more mid-range torque now. And I was manually shifting and just rolling into the gears. So now, I just got it in, you know, fully automatic mode. Just gonna slam the pedal down and watch what happens. Jesus! Man, man, just can't, can't wait to get all the other stuff done too, you know? I mean, yeah, I think it's pulling that hard with a half a tank of fuel, me in it. It's a little warmer out today, 80 degrees outside and uh, AC is on, so, you know, theoretically it would even be quicker in, in more optimal conditions. So, new Boost Max working really well. And, you know, one thing I wanna say is they're not paying me to say all that, they're not doing anything. I'm saying that because I've been just that happy with the product and their support of their product. It's important for me uh, when a company backs their product and believes in it and it takes care of their customer base. When a company does that, they'll have me as a lifelong customer, as long as they keep that mentality. And it's not just giving me free things or whatever, which, you know, I believe the situation of the Boost Max is more or less a warrantied type deal. It's just knowing that they care enough about their customer and not the bottom line. To me, that's huge. I've run my business that way, and I support other businesses that run that way. And that's just how I feel. Unlike some businesses that we're currently headed to. So we'll be at the body shop here shortly. Uh, I'm not even gonna film anything there. I have no reason to. What is done is done. I'm just gonna run in, grab what I need, come out to the car, and that will be that. Oh God. So it's been the next day or two days maybe since that last clip. But uh, anyways, got the parts here from the body shop. More Ford parts, thankfully. So that means we can go put them on. Uh, I'll start with the easiest one first, and that's this. Yeah, this literally just clips in, like super simple. Now, tab there, Let's push it in, push it in. Ha ha, all right, cool, that's done. Oh, that's not good. Actually, to my surprise, made in the USA. Let's see here. Okay, 13's a winner. It was indeed a 13. Hey, look, the GoPro is good at something. Holds the part up while I put the nut on. How about that? There's that one. 
and up over here. Easy squeezy. Those two parts are now back on the car where they belong. And the last thing I'm gonna take care of in this video is I'm gonna try to get some of this uh, scuff out that's back here. I don't think there's really much I can do here without any touch up paint. And I'm just gonna leave that alone for now. But I can get this little scuff out right here. Let's shine a light on this so you can get a better look. I need to clean the surface real quick. All right. Of course, I'm using all of my handy dandy Chemical Guys products. You know, I really wish I could do a uh, sponsorship with Chemical Guys. I mean, I've inquired. They're not easy to get in touch with, believe it or not. But I do love a lot of their products. So you use a little bit of uh, cutting compound here. There we go, we don't need much. See, it's kind of in a peculiar spot. See, the good thing is, all of this was ceramic hooded right before Christmas. It really shouldn't be hard to get out because it really it's just, it just should be in the layer of the ceramic coating. All right, looks like we got just a little bit right there. It's not near as noticeable. Like you really have to look hard to see it. As good as it's gonna get. And yeah, you, you can't even really tell, honestly. This is now more noticeable than anything, but that's a problem for another day. But we got that fuel line cover back on. Got this trim piece back on, new boost backs put in, car's running good. It just took a little bit of extra work and elbow grease, but that's all right. Anything to keep that shot from touching it and messing it up even more. It's kind of a sad reality when you got to think about it, things that way, but that's what it is. That's mostly wrapping up the restoration of Buster after the accident. So I think we're all set, man. There's still more things that need to get taken care of, but nothing substantial and all that stuff's probably gonna be done behind the scenes anyway so i'm not gonna bother you or bore you with any of that stuff in terms of content so i can save the more exciting stuff for said content so if you want to see more content like that go ahead give the video a thumbs up if you liked it share it with everyone you know and keep a look out for the next true car enthusiast video